beautiful Moscow Bates Motel. God, this place is great. I gotta come back here at some point. All right, I gotta get gas first. That's no big deal. Let everything warm up a little bit. I'm not gonna record the whole way there. I'll probably record down at the gas station. This is a group of seven guys, six dudes on motorcycles, one in a truck, and they're doing the first couple sections of the of the Washington BDR, and then they're splitting up. Three of them are continuing on, and the rest are going to Seattle. Have fun. See you later. And uh, they're gonna skip section one because they have several people who are very new to adventure riding. Like basically never ridden off road before, ridden street only. And I don't know what section one's gonna look like, so. <laughs> but this is their first like off-road motorcycle trip all as a group. We'll get down here, we'll fill up on gas kill the cameras, and then get over to Bridge of the Gods, which is where I'm going. That is the official start of the BDR. I know for certain that once I'm past Packwood, it is open. Pe people have gotten through sections two, three, four, five, six. It's just trying to get through this first section at this point. But that was good. That was that was nine full days off and just editing footage. I got four videos done and uploaded because Moscow was nice enough to let me use their Wi-Fi at the office. Twenty minutes later. Here's the Bridge of the Gods. But yeah, there you go. Bridge of the Gods. And the start of the Washington BDR. I have seen more adventure motorcycles this morning than I've seen in the entire rest of the trip put together. I think I saw four separate groups of at least three. I saw one group of like five or something. But we're gonna get back here, get through Stevenson. So it's only 117 miles to Packwood. And somewhere north of Packwood would be the goal for tonight. It, but it's just gonna depend on how much snow I run into. I know if I need to, the, the map has an alternate of basically how to get to Seattle. And it does go through Packwood. So if I have to, I can jump onto that. And I would imagine that I will end up seeing the big group of seven at least once more, because I they're skipping section one, but I should probably catch back up to them in section two or something like that. Like, so we'll see. All right, well, I think I am gonna turn the cameras off and I will catch you once I actually get to dirt. Later. Panther Creek. Okay, here's the end of the pavement. Get warmed up. Haven't been riding for about a week. Can't see much. Those are big holes, damn. Here's some more. Good lord. No thanks. And I don't really expect anything too technical on this section. The Washington BDR isn't really considered one of the hard ones. It was the first one that they created. I do know tomorrow there's Babyhead Hill, which might be pretty challenging. And the biggest challenge with today, I, I think is just gonna be where's the snow. Haven't bothered lowering my tire pressures yet. I might tomorrow. I don't know of anything that's gonna be too gnarly today that I would need to. <laughs> Get 
getting a few views through the trees, but it's definitely uh, it's a tree tunnel for a lot of this. All right, so left and then right looks like. So far, I've just kind of been following this main road up above 2,000. Would be a tight fit for a truck. That was a really big tree. God, I love this. I'm not going fast because I can't see real well with the shadows. It's just everything is alive. It, it really is just riding through Fern Gully. I would imagine a little bit later in the year it gets pretty dry in here and dusty. Yeah, like it's not even dusty right now because everything is kind of damp. I can see the tire marks from the other motorcycle group that came through. Good God. Alright. <laughs> I don't know that the drone could follow me through this. Good God. Like there's a bunch of that where I you really can't stand up going through it because you'll just be in the bushes. This is really cool. It's just <laughs> very overgrown. And then I think I pop back out on a road of some kind. I don't know. Whatever. I'm going this way. <laughs> Branches all over the place. <laughs> and this, I mean, there's water on it, but it's honestly not even really muddy because there's a hard pack. I really can't say that I've hit anything I would consider, like, loose or sandy. I would imagine a lot of this stuff is wet often enough that it's pretty well packed down and just kind of doesn't change a whole lot. Back to second it is. It smells amazing back here. Just smells alive. Oh, that was deeper than I expected. <laughs> it was fine, but that was deep. That's loose. It's like gravel. Okay, I can't see. Let's go over here, I think. I would call it a good basic to intermediate skill level. Like, if you're just a full-on true novice, you're probably not gonna have a whole lot of fun on some parts of this, because you don't know what you're doing. But with any kind of any kind of training and then any basic level of skills with riding off-road, you're gonna be fine. It's pretty damn straightforward. Ooh, never mind, I want to be over here. And, excuse me. That's gonna be a big tree that needs to get cleared off the trail. Good lord. Open up a little bit here. Get through this stuff. That's a big tree. Yeah, here's the overlook. Actually, I guess it's further up here. No, it's right here. We're gonna just stop right here, I think. Turn you off, turn you off. Up to a little bit over 3,000 feet. And yeah, we're just gonna keep going. Going until I hit something that stops me. It's basically the entire plan. Yeah, to be honest, that viewpoint's not that great. Ooh, that's a new one. That's recent. Let's go first. So 
that probably happened in the last day or two. Coming up this would be challenging. Up to 66, still feels really nice. Yep, lots of little tree branches. Technically they're trees, they're just really little ones. Can't see, let's go over here and bonk. That's kind of loose and gravelly. I want to the other side, there we go. Bonk, all right. Oh, that's very gravelly. Let's go over here. I kind of want in the middle if I can. I don't think I can though. There we go. Wonder why all this is loose. That doesn't make a ton of sense. Ooh, that's sand. I want over here. There we go. Wow. That is a strange hill. Not gonna lie. That was fun. There was some. Oh, bent my, moved my mirror. <laughs> Definitely uh, some loose in there. That climb was just gravel. Alright, well, doing well. Still haven't seen any snow. I would still call it beginner intermediate. You know, there's plenty of things where it's going to be challenging for a beginner, for sure. And they're going to want, you know, people with them and help them out and stuff. But yeah, I mean, an intermediate rider could get up that without falling over. Peterson, yeah, so now I am in the Gifford Pinochet National Forest. I'm just at the southern end of it. When Tana and I came through, we were at the northern end of it. But yeah, welcome back to Fern Gully. <laughs> I'm going this way somewhere. There it is. God, this is beautiful. <laughs> the road's got a few snags, but uh, yeah, I am definitely a fan of the Gifford Pinochet. More at what? Not quite 4,000 feet. Okay, so. When will we start seeing snow, is the question. Still about 66, that feels excellent. And I know about 20 miles out of Packwood is where the snow will basically end, because a group coming south out of Packwood hit snow about 20 miles out. So if I can get that far, then I should be good. I wonder if they use a lot of this for like snowmobile trails in the winter. I don't see why you couldn't. Other than maybe Moab, I would say this is probably one of the prettiest starts to a BDR. <sighs> this is all really chill. It's just fun. It's absolutely beautiful back here. And the riding is just this, you know? I could be going faster if I wanted to. I just, I don't need to. So I'm just sitting back and enjoying the ride. Smelling the trees, listening to the forest and the bike. There's a mountain with snow on it. I'm at still below 3,000 still. <laughs> Redundancy. <laughs> 50 miles from uh, Packwood. There's snow, not on the road, but it's the first snow I've actually seen, basically almost exactly 50 miles from Packwood at 4,100 feet. I have to think Washington is probably one of the more popular BDRs. You know, you do have population centers pretty close, and it's one of the original ones. It is, well, it is the original one. Oregon is by a different organization. Pacific Crest Trail. That was the Pacific Crest Trail. I know I crossed it a couple more times. I'd kind of forgotten about that. 
Yeah, by the time you're here, you're getting pretty close to the end. So you're doing really good. And they'll probably be coming through here in August. This has been just really pleasant. You know, there's been a few technical areas, but they're all short enough that you're not, you know, getting exhausted or anything. And none of them were super difficult or anything. So it's, it really has just been pleasant riding. Oh, this is the Pacific Crest Trail again. No, oh, here's dirt. That's gravel. Oh my god. <laughs> They just marked that as bump. Holy f the road's gone, guys. <laughs> Thank God I'm on an ADV bike. God, you could ruin somebody with that. Bump. Uh, it's a little bit more than that, guys. That's a jump. <laughs> Crap. Alright, let's see where the snow starts. I'll go over here. So two miles from Takalak Lake is where this starts. I'm at 4250. There's still paths through. I'm not even having to walk the bike yet. I probably will here. Okay, here's the first. Yeah, is that going to be continuous? Yep. All right, so it looks like there's about 17 miles of snow still. Oh, there's trees down. Yep, that's not happening. That's a hard no. Nope, not by myself. This looks like it might have been when they were on their way back because it's all torn up, so they might have been spinning the wheel trying to get through. Okay. So, talk to this guy. That paved road is called Forest Road 90. And I checked the map. It, it goes all the way out to the green route and around to Packwood. So, I'm going to have to backtrack quite a ways. But, it's alright. It was worth a shot. So, I'm going to go back to the paved bit. This guy came along, he's like, I only got two-wheel drive. I'm like, dude, do not even think of trying to drive into that. You would not make it 10 feet. So, that's too bad. But that's about what I expected to happen. <laughs> Can't really say I was surprised. There was definitely at least three bikes, a group of at least three definitely pushed further up the trail. I couldn't tell if they came back. I don't think that they made it, but uh, yeah, it is it is not open yet. And this is gonna connect, if I can zoom this out enough, you'll see eventually it connects to the green route, which is there, which loops around and goes into Packwood. This is so pretty back here though. Everything on this section has just been amazing. Debating if I just turn the cameras off. I think I probably will. But I think I'm just gonna be on this kind of stuff all the way through and it's super pretty. It's just not gonna be interesting for the video. So I will see you near Packwood. Then two hours later. You're not gonna believe this, but this is the road from our trip to Washington. That was the Iron Creek campground that I just passed. But yeah, this this is the road that Tana and I rode on. That's incredible. I didn't know that was gonna happen, but that's hilarious. I knew I was in the area. I just didn't know that it was literally this.
<laughs> I need to look when we came through here, but it was very close to exactly five years ago. That is so funny. Heading out of Packwood. Ended up not really filming anything when I got into Packwood because I had a bit of a debacle like getting gas and stuff. I had to go to two different gas stations because the one the pumps wouldn't work. Had dinner set up and that was it. Heading out 121 miles to I can't remember the name of the town now. Um, I did hear so I the group of guys that I met at Moscow Moto diverted around section one, got on to section two, and then almost immediately got turned around because of mud. So we're gonna see what that looks like. I think I'll be okay. All right, well, I'm gonna ride this, and I guess I'll see you once I hit dirt, because I really don't know where that's gonna be, and it might be a minute, so I'll catch you later. According to the sign, this is the start of Bethel Ridge. Which, if nothing else, just given where we are, should be really pretty. Did get all the way down to 50 degrees going up over White Pass. Had to turn on my heated hand grips at one point. This is chill. This is just zigzagging up a hill. <sighs> I know I'm not saying much. I don't have anything to talk about. This is a super straightforward road. Just climbing my way up here. I may turn my heated hand grips back on. It's in the mid 50s. I think I just heard an elk. Oh. There's people yelling. Hold on. What's going on? I could barely hear it and I couldn't tell what it was. <laughs> Where are you guys at? Oh, camp yeah. right just down here. Oh, okay. Did you get my post that I posted last Yeah, time? I saw that. So where'd you get turned around at? Just up on the top of the ridge. Up the top of the ridge. Oh, okay. So where'd you, so you guys ended up just going back down here and camping or? We're going to do the, the alternate, route. alternate route. Yeah. We'll see if it works. We had one motorcycle die. Up here. Oh no. They're in Tacoma. They got there last night. Oh god. And got it loaded in a. What happened to it? Probably valve, issue valve or something. something. Oh god. So we parked down here, stopped several miles back. When he started it, it wasn't. went idle. Ooh. And went yeah. Idle, and then it would run as long as he kept it going. We got up to here and it was just still not working. Hmm. So we tore it apart trying to figure it out, but. So the truck, the, the truck, truck and him to the bike off. went back down to the highway and it yeah. died on the highway. Died oh the God! Highway. But they got a ride. Somebody they got a up. someone that had a long bed truck. And oh, nice! And took him to Tacoma Drove last night. Drove him to the dealership. That's super Drove lucky. Bike and he's got an appointment for the morning or in about an hour. But a few inches later. All right. Yeah, we're gonna ride with these guys today. See what's going on. Cause why not? You know? Do we got everybody? I don't think we do. No, well, they're on comms with each other, so they'll figure it out. Well, we're gonna get up here and go to the alternate, which should be clear. We'll 
find out pretty quick, I guess. And so if I went that way, I would get to the top of the ridge. All right, today we're going an alternate route. This is the beginning of it. Normally I look out over my bike and see my beautiful blue nose of my bike. But uh, yesterday that was given to the tree and it's sitting on the seat behind me. So hopefully I'm gonna have fewer encounters with trees today. That's one of my big goals for the day. Also uh, today I get to ride with my buddy Leo. He's on the bike uh, with me today. He's one of the inspirations of the trip. I lost him a couple years ago and uh, <clears throat> his wife was kind enough to let us bring some of his remains along so that he could participate in the trip. Glad to have Leo here today. And we picked up uh, Meerkat Rider. He's up in front of me and uh, honored to have him join us. He stayed. We stayed with him at the Moscow Moto Hotel a couple nights ago. Here we found each other on the trail again today. So here we are riding together, which is very cool. I'll get everybody else's names at some point. Basically almost everybody's on a GS. There we go. It'll be a good group to ride with though. I think we got two firefighters, me, Matt, and Josh are the most experienced adventure riders out of the group. They've done several other adventure trips together. And so they're kind of acting as the guides. So I got Matt up in front and Josh doing trail. I'll do middle, middle, middle for a while. And yeah, it's just a good group of guys. They're all basically like high school buddies. They were normally doing like backpacking trips and stuff and they've moved into motorcycling. Yep, yeah, he's way back, but he's there. It's just super dusty. There's only so much you can do about it. Brian's basically staying right on the ass of Matt. He's probably the newest rider, or most inexperienced with off-road, so that's not a bad idea, really. Wow, that all burned. That burned bad. Holy crap. Are some pretty decent sized potholes back here. Try not to just go flying into one like that. And this, that's not too bad. So let's see, there are six of us now. That means there are three people behind me. Yeah, oh, big gravel, oof. That's fun, that road must have washed out. And honestly, this is really pleasant riding. I'm sure Bethel Ridge is a lot of fun, but if it was gonna be snowy and muddy, like, that stops being fun pretty quick. and everything back here are just beautiful. It's a, just a, you know, it's a pine forest. It's like Colorado, Idaho, northern New Mexico. The problem there is like even laying back isn't making the dust clear because there's like no wind. And here's a road. This is cool. I'm kind of surprised it's a paved road, but I mean, like, damn, it's really nice. This is 
super fun. This is a great alternate. Like, granted, you're on pavement, but look at it. It's gorgeous back here. Yep, there's the main route. That's a fun little road. That? that was a fun little road. Yeah, it was. Getting gas. I guess somebody needs it. All right, I am going to go ahead and kill the cameras until we get back onto dirt. I may do a little introduction of everybody once we're at the gas station. A few moments later. All right, let's go around the room. What's your name? What bike are you riding and where are you from? Uh, my name is Cy. I'm riding a BMW R1200 GS Adventure. I am from Clovis, California. My name is Matt. I'm riding a 1200 GS and I'm from uh, Prather, California. I'm Josh and I'm a KTM 790 Adventure S and I'm from Toll House, California. I'm a spin food. Hi, I'm Steven. Uh, I'm on a BMW 1250 GSA and I'm from San Luis Obispo, California. I'm riding, on, I'm riding a BMW F800. How's it going? Good. It's a, my first long trip, but kind of my first any kind of trip. So <laughs> yeah. Learning is a learning experience, but good. Where are you from? So I'm from Sonora, California. Okay. And the two we're missing are Kyle and Andre? Zach and Andre. Or Zach, Zach and Andre. Andre yeah. Because Zach broke his bike yesterday. <laughs> We're not missing him that much. Well, yeah. Cool. So, yeah. These are the guys that I'm subjecting to my vlogging. <laughs> the only other obstacle that I know of on today is Baby Head Hill, and I don't think we'll do it because it would be um, a nightmare. <laughs> Heavy bikes are not a good idea on that hill. One minute, 37 seconds later. Yeah. Can't get there. Where is it blocked? Uh, I can show you on the map. So it's on the other side of Ellensburg. No, no. Yeah, yeah, it's on the other side of Ellensburg. So this we can thing... get from, to Ellensburg oh, no from problem. here. no problem. This is easy. Okay. Oh, okay. You're saying once we leave Ellensburg, Once you leave Ellensburg, issue. you won't, if you were going to continue, yeah. you, you won't be able to do that section. up in altitude where it's a little bit cooler. Oh, I guess we're just gonna zigzag up a hill, aren't we? You know, it'd be kind of fun to, to not see what's happening and try to narrate what you think is actually happening <laughs> in your head based on what you're hearing. Just by what you're hearing? Yeah, just I think it was just those rocks and that hard right hander. Because yeah. it was definitely pretty loose in there. If it was Brian, I didn't even see him go down. He was right with me, and then all of a sudden he was just gone. Okay, well, we'll come down to the shade. <laughs> if you guys are going to be there for a minute. Ah, he didn't go outside on the turn. That'll get you. Hey, he's using his cruise toolkit. I offered wire. I got it. That's right. So he wired it up and. Yeah, I know. See a foot peg in the. Well, he'll know immediately. Yeah, he'll know real quick. Yeah. <laughs> the pin is sheared in half, so it's held in the front, but not in the back. See what kind of group you got into. You see, I know. Oh, right? I warned you. I warned you. No, it's all right. <laughs> Oh, he's right here. We're only 50 miles from Ellensburg, so. Brian, are you touching your brake pedal? Yes, okay. Well, no, I just, I don't want him dragging his rear brake because he'll smoke his brakes. So we're on our second dirt section of the BDR today and uh, had a little mishap. Uh, Brian went down and sheared one of the bolts for one of his foot pegs and uh, broke the lock on one of his panniers so it's strapped on so no it's not any big deal but just 
little annoying breakages that happen. And hopefully, the foot tag will hold so we can get some kind of other hole. Oh, washboard. That's pretty rocky. God, people got houses up here. Okay. I got a hell of a view too. Maybe I watched this section on a video. I feel like I've been here before. It's loose like that. You gotta gun it a little bit. I feel like speed's a little challenging with it being this loose. That is to say, it should be going a touch faster. But we got a big group of us and kind of have to do what we often do. So. So for us, it's a big adventure, but for somebody, it's just part of their driveway. Nice views over there, which I haven't really had a chance to look at so I'm focused on where I'm going. Uh, somehow I shifted into third. Yeah, I think it's the trees. I mean, you know, we keep doing turns, so we're, we're fairly close to each other physically, but the switchbacks are, yeah, just we're dropping out the moment we go around a corner. rocky though damn this got washed out you can see where the water went down it oh boy I'm gonna let you guys uh Brian's down yo yeah 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 are you okay Brian Yeah, you didn't break anything. You were basically stopped when you fell over. <laughs> that's just, that's a really rocky hill. And this isn't even Baby Head Hill yet. Oh, oh. Jesus. Uh, that's as far as we're gonna get. We gotta go forward. Be yeah, be ready with that break though. You might want to just stand right there because I may uh, <laughs> get to about right where you're at. <sighs> I always psych myself out on this stuff. <laughs> through the worst of it.
I'm gonna go up further. Because there's nowhere to stop. It gets pretty bad up here, guys. Like, it gets worse. Okay. I'm just trying to get somewhere where I can stop, and it, it gets pretty bad. Like, I'm not even somewhere where I can turn around. Oh God, yeah, it's, it's bad, guys. No, I'm gonna stop right here. I think we try and just turn them around right here. Whew, that was gnarly. <laughs> Take some gear off. Did you get offline or were you still on this right side? Oh yeah, that'll do it. Oh, that's a big boy. There we go. Yep, ready? One, two, three. Whew, I'm gonna take my helmet off. One pair of pants later. What was that? We got turned around. We're working on coming back down the hill. So we're gonna get down. We're gonna get down to Brian, and then we'll work on getting him flipped around. I'll get back over to the left if I can. Okay, I'm gonna come past and come all the way down to you, Brian. I need to get my kickstand down. A little longer than a few minutes later. They say it just rode over all the rough stuff on the right and it wasn't bad. Yeah. You at least have good traction. It's just rough. Right, yeah, can you give me a hand? Uh, you gotta let me have it. You're pulling me over. It's always that way people have a tendency to try to bounce it. Just get them to the focus and let them bounce. Yeah. Give me the, the give me the pushing. boost and then let make sure you push just straight ahead, not side yeah. because you're pushing right over. Yeah, you're not really helping me with balance. No, you're helping me from rolling backwards. I did exactly what you did in the opposite direction. Hit that loose. Yep. You said nope. Yeah. <laughs> let's uh, let's spin it while it's okay. still on its side. So if we grab the front wheel, we can kind of get it facing the right direction. Let me grab the handlebars. Oh, yeah. If you grab the handlebars, you'll see if we get it up. Well, that's really different. I don't have anything to hang on to back here. Yeah. There we go. Pointed upright. One, two, three. And it's in gear, so it's not going anywhere. Do you want to just kind of hold it? Absolutely. Yeah, I got it. I got it. I got it. Yeah, I, got I, got it. it. I got it too. <laughs> I'm going to have a wet dream tonight about how light this bike was. <laughs> so if you want to just help me. Uh, yep. He'll start. Yeah, basically. Uh... Oh, that's not where I want to go. That is 
is nasty. Okay. <laughs> Four more to go. Let's do just a little bit. So much later that the old narrator got tired of waiting and they had to hire a new one. Stop, you got a trap dangling. Uh, actually wait. Wait, 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 wait. Stop, Brian. Your right hand ear is falling out of the trap. 50 feet. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta strap that back on. I'll just keep an eye on that. Okay. As much as I can. <laughs> given, given the dust cloud that we're riding through most of the time. <laughs> Don't do that. Just stay on the bike. Just need to turn your head. Turn the bike. Turn your knee. Just lean into it. Wait, what? Yeah. No, he's talking to me. It is repairable. Okay. Let us know if you need something. Well, I mean, there's nothing I can do to help. <laughs> I have tubes. That doesn't do you any favors. No, I've got everything. Matt should have everything. 
Do you need anything that uh, Josh has? Five minutes later. Well, my headset's gonna die here in a minute. Yep. It happens. I'll give you plenty of space. I'll give you plenty of space. Yeah, there's a gnarly bit right there. At least move up closer. See what this looks like. Yeah, okay. Now I get it. It's basically loose gravel. Very loose gravel. Holy crap. Second it is. I got lucky, the left line on that was a lot easier. <laughs> oh, you went up the left? Yeah, the oh, left like, line was good, way good easier. <laughs> good job on that. Uh... Dude, that was, what well, they probably did it for like, you know, erosion control or whatever, but like, damn, that that oh, yeah. will f erode up. Oh yeah, I'm sure you saw me, I, I didn't fall. You had to stop like I got twice. I had to stop, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was when I decided I was gonna at least try the left side and yeah. see if it was better, and I'm really glad I did. That was, I mean, that was deep. But yeah, that was that's interesting. <laughs> Hopefully, there's not too much more of that on the route. Yeah. We sink like the Titanic. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna stop in Ellensburg because it's been a day. Uh, it sounds like Zach and Andre are going to meet back up with us in Ellensburg. Zach's bike, I guess, blew a valve, and he actually ended up buying a new bike, and is riding that out here, <laughs> and then he'll, ooh, somebody went wide, and then he'll figure out how to get the bike back after this trip is over. That's, that's definitely one way to solve a problem. That's probably normally a water crossing of some kind. Kind of surprised there isn't water in it, but. That's fun. I want back to the left, to the right. <laughs> Bridge and road. Oh, hi, Sage Grouse. We're going that way. Yeah. One, two, three, four. F yeah. Eight miles to Ellensburg. I definitely just set off in fourth gear. <laughs> Down to 75 degrees, that feels pretty good.
Yeah, as I say, I felt like that fell out of somebody's luggage. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? Where are you from? What are you driving? Andre Martinez. I am from Visalia, California. Right in the middle. And I'm driving a TRD right there behind everybody. The fail oh, yeah. wagon. Yes, right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Speaking, yeah, speaking of the fail wagon. Yeah. What's your name, where are you from, and what are you riding now versus what were you riding yesterday? <laughs> My name is Zach Emmerling from Clovis, California, riding a brand new to me 2014 BMW GSA 1200. And what were you on before? A 2007 GSA 1200. Yesterday, well, this one's definitely prettier than the other one. Oh god, yeah. <laughs> that's a good that's a, yeah. that's a, well, yeah, for the next hour, and yeah. then we'll, we'll, we'll see what it looks like after that. <laughs> give us time, give the us next time. Hour. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, that was actually a pretty nice hotel, even though I'm pretty sure it was a retirement home in a previous life. Hey, I have slept on the floor of a post office on a hiking trip, so. Don't, don't, don't honk at the cows. That pisses, that pisses the, f yeah, don't, oh, careful, all right. Ready? One, two, three. <clears throat> it's alright, I can get it. And you're good. Oh, they're the dumbest hunks of in the world, but. Yeah, there's a view for you. Just don't drive off the road trying to look at it. Yeah. So yeah, these are called the Reeser Creek Twisties. And then seven miles is called the Lion Rock Viewpoint. What is it, what are they, Groms? Oh yeah, the, no, 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 that was a Honda Monkey and the other one was a Grom, so same motor. Yeah, they're 125s. All right, I'm gonna give you more room for the dust. Nice save. No, it is not. Yeah, that ain't bad. Back to the rocks. Oh. Yeah, 
Yeah, just wait. All right, so I'll take the front wheel. If you take your handlebar, okay. and we'll just rotate the front wheel downhill, okay? okay. <clears throat> One more. <clears throat> okay, that should be good. Let me know when you're ready. One, Care. two, three. Something came off. Well, there's your problem. <laughs> Pull on that. Oh. If you would be so kind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All yours. Oh, that's a big ditch. Okay. This is fun. Finally opened up to some flowy two track stuff. Well, okay. Welcome back to Fern Gully. I definitely think we're past the tree stoppage at this point. It would have been back there somewhere or along here, but you know, people have been coming the other way, so it sure looks like it's clear. So I think we're gonna get through just fine. Everything's burned. 10 miles to Beehive Reservoir. 44 miles to Kashmir. So we're doing pretty good. That's fun. my mirror tree branch smacked the shit out of it and turned it around that's a good one There you go. All right, I'm gonna get out of the way. You okay, Brian? Okay, I'm coming up to you, hang on. 
Hold on. Are you stuck or are you okay? Okay. <clears throat> yeah, it's alright. I think we probably need a third person for this. <laughs> this is going to be a steep lift. So on these, what you can do, come up and then cut across as like a straight line because it gives you more chance to get on the gas and get going. Yeah, we need an extra one because it's like upside down almost. <laughs> okay, one, two, Yeah, or you can get on the other side if you want. Yeah, yeah do that. <laughs> All you. Here's the top. Oh yeah, okay. Go over there, right side coming down this. Mud. Ugh. Oh, okay, yeah. Yep. I got one up here. Don't take my line through there. Okay. What's up? Is is Brian clear? Oh, okay. Do you need us to come up there? Two, three. Okay, you can let it onto the sand actually. Right there. Ooh, maybe not. All right, we're not gonna let you fall. Oh, you gotta hold the brake though. But yeah, you gotta give it some gas. Catch it, we got you. All right, it's all you. And babe, stay on, you got it. Okay. Pretty much, yeah. I may try and come up kind of the middle. But yeah, I just don't want to hit that. <laughs> Saved it, but damn, that was close. All right, I'm clear. Whew. Who are you talking to? Oh, oh yeah, okay. Oh God. Oh. 
nice. All right. So I guess I gotta kind of just do the left line. Oh God. Yeah, yeah, yeah I see it. I f***ed that up. Can you help pull me back so I can get a run at this? So you think left? At this point, I just go right. You know, right through. I just don't know if I can get enough momentum. Yeah, I know. All right, here we go. Oh, all right. Well. <laughs> <laughs> the bike wanted to go that way, so that's the way I went. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna get up here to where Brian's at. Where'd you go, Brian? Oh, there you are. Woo! <laughs> Verdict is. That's a gnarly little section of trail. That very clearly washed out pretty badly at some point. Those are like steps. But there's a couple of uh, low clearance vehicles over here, so we're pretty sure that's the worst of it. One heck of a view, though. Yeah, that's a thing for sure. <laughs> so normally, if I hadn't stopped at the bottom of that hill, I would have just kept going. Oh, he's on it. Yeah, he's good. A little, you know, a little descent, a little gain. These little key things are scary, but I like to cruise up. Yeah, they're just little. You, they're just little steps. You just have to get the momentum and go for it. the road yeah that's not bad it's a big damn tree I wouldn't want to come around that corner at speed that's for sure oh this is fun Glad I linked up with a group because a lot of that would have been really a mess by myself. Alrighty, welcome to the paved road. Brian, your straps are hilarious. It looks like little streamers on your bike. <laughs> it's very festive. And there's dirt. down a second gear. Make that first. Great. Oh yeah. Yeah, just pick a line and you'll go through it. stop here where it flattens out are you okay all right hang on yeah you're just spinning now I think we got back up it's 
thankfully shorter. <laughs> we just gotta get to that flat bit. Oh! Okay, hold on to the clutch, but use the clutch as the brake. So if it starts moving, let go of the clutch. Here we go. Yeah, just nice and easy. One, two, three. <clears throat> there it goes. Yep, turn. And stop. Right there. Go through your uh, kickstand down. Get off your brake. Okay. Yeah, it's just give me plenty of room. I'm just gonna tractor up it. For you guys at the bottom of the hill, right side or center only. Do not go left. All right, here we go. chiller than that other bit. That bit's definitely had a lot of water down it. Yeah, I would basically just say middle, middle, middle. Yeah, right? And then go somewhere else. Oh, I don't like that. Okay. It's all kind of crappy, so just <laughs> pick whatever you want. It's all about the same. That was fun. Go and go by me, Brian. There you go. Hell yes, this is fun. More roads like this, please. Holy crap. Yeah, my bike says 91. It's definitely not cool. That's just fantastic, isn't it? Just powder sand and It's deep sand, okay. Oh wow. 
the view there. I want to look over my right shoulder right now, but I don't want to wreck. Because <laughs> I can tell it's beautiful, I just can't look. Wow. too bad on the left. You can cross over up here. <laughs> you <laughs> that, that's all that's a whole lot of nope that is a view Let's see if I can try not to drive off this mountainside while I enjoy it basically 5,000 feet altitude just riding along this shelf road. In camp, just packing up. Should be a pretty chill day. All right, let's do this thing. Day four of the Washington BDR. And this is the last day with the full group. So partway through today, the truck and three of the bikes are breaking off. And then it's just gonna be Josh, Matt, Steve, and I. And they will eventually continue up into Canada and do some stuff up there and then I will hook east and connect over to the Idaho BDR. But yeah, what a great group to let me be a part of this. We're 21 miles from whatever this town is that none of us can figure out how to pronounce. It's a little rutted up there. Nice 
balmy 66 degrees. I know I didn't talk to the camera much yesterday. Um, I had the headset on, so I was kind of talking to everybody else. Let's see, it's June, what is it, 26th? And I think it's another two days for Washington. And then it'll be on to Idaho. And I just have to be in South Dakota by the 17th. So I got plenty of time. sand god this road turned into a ton of fun <laughs> so let's see I'm near the back now so the only person behind me is Josh and then Andre I believe Steve is the one who's directly in front of me I'm trying to give him some space so I'm not right up his ass I'm getting dusted out are blooming it's like perfect temperature yeah this is great <laughs> that was fun it's another right turn Josh all right nice Steve I saw that these water bars are fun, man. You could absolutely just like evil can evil one of these things though if you weren't, weren't being careful. Today is I believe day four of the BDR in Washington. And today's the day that uh, the other crew parts from us later today. Me and Josh and Matt will continue on to Canada to finish BDR and head up into Canada and the rest of the guys are off to Seattle and breweries and what I'm calling the bougie part of the trip. So it's been great having all the guys here together and I look forward to new and different adventures ahead. These shelf roads are so much fun. You're just kind of out there on the edge, enjoying the view. Almost hit that rock. <laughs> yeah, Washington's been funny. It's like, sometimes it's loose and chunky. Most of the time it's really chill. And then all of a sudden you ride into something and it's like, oh, we're gonna do this now. It's just steep and loose and rocky and <laughs> this is my life now. <laughs> but it's a ton of fun for riding. pace back here a little bit because when I'm riding behind Brian I'm really trying not to catch him because if he has a problem I don't want to be right on top of him and the, the slinky effect back here basically as soon as I see Steve's dust I can back off a little bit and then as soon as I'm out of his dust I can just get on it again and ride a ton of fun. I do definitely feel like we are moving faster than we have moved in previous days. Obviously the roads are a little bit in better condition, the trails are nice, but also, you know, people are getting a better feel for the bikes and 
being more comfortable at higher speeds. And so, yeah, just the overall pace has definitely picked up even since just yesterday. All right, we're gonna go to second, I guess. This is pretty rutted up. Oh, hi, sheep. Josh, watch out for the sheep if you can hear me. Excuse me. Here's everybody. minutes later bye bye and then there were four Right, right, right. Yep. Oh, and sand. A little bit. Oh, you okay? Yeah. Let me get where I can stop. Yeah, you got cross rutted. Uh, I can't. Can you help me get somewhere where I can put my side stand down? Yeah. And I'll help you. Uh... You want to get over there, maybe? Yeah. Let me just do that. Ready? Oh, One, two, three. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Let me go up here real quick. One, two, three. You're in a rut, yeah. Yeah, this is gonna be cool. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Keep coming, keep coming, keep going. Alright, and stop. Okay. Whew. <laughs> yeah, you got cross rutted there, I saw you. No, you're alright, it happened real quick. Whew. Thank you boys. Yep. I didn't even realize that we stopped. <laughs> oh, that feels good. Yes, please. A little sandy in places, but it's not deep. It's just the dirt's been kind of churned up. So yeah, you just ride through it and then gravel. There's Josh. I was just saying, I see you. <laughs> Saved it. Did you catch that I ate it right? at the beginning. I cross-rutted right at that turn. And then Brady was trying to help me and I and then he ended up falling over. <laughs> so I 
15 miles to Slide Ridge View, 51 miles to Chellin. Like, this is kind of what I wish the rest of the BDR had been like a little bit, but it's all been really fun. guys would have loved this but we still would have been going slower as soon as you add people to a group you just end up with a slower overall speed you gonna give us some room and then catch up okay that way I know whether to be looking for you or not miles to Chellin and then from Chellin ooh, that's deep well that's really deep okay um, from Chellin to the border is basically 166 miles so yeah we're getting pretty close so either tomorrow or the next day we should be finishing this thing. So that's just shy of 6,000. I'm not sure what the highest point of this BDR is, but it's gotta be pretty close to that. Oh, Jeep, great. Two more. One more. I got rocky all of a sudden. Oh, there's a branch hanging out on the right. You can hear me, Brady. Ooh, hello, tree. All right, so this all burned. Four miles to the jungle. Looks like we got another kind of a trail or something. Can't tell if it's actually a thing or not. And we're going hard right. I'm assuming they're gonna be up here at the intersection. Where are they at? Guys? 
So I show that as a hard right. As the main track, and this is but I but this is the uh, the alternate to go around the jungle. I think so. I, I'd be surprised if they didn't. So you want me to just go straight? Yeah. Alright. That's fine. Yeah, they had to have gone straight. There's no way they made that turn. Not without stopping and waiting for us. Oh yeah. I love gravel. more miles to the end of this alternate. Still haven't seen them. I mean, I'll be shocked if they're not in front of us. Like, it just wouldn't make any sense for them to have taken that alter that the main route and not waited. But I sure don't see them. See dust. Is there a bike down there? Oh yeah, I see dust. Okay, so we're catching up to him. Excuse me, tree. Twenty-three miles to Chellen. Yeah, I don't know why, but yeah, I, I downloaded mine probably a month ago. So I'm wondering if they took the jungle off of the track because it might be so messed up. I guess we're not really gaining elevation, but it's definitely not getting any cooler. What's that? So we're not really gaining elevation, and it's not really getting any cooler. Yeah, I mean, we're up to 2,400, so we've gained almost 1,000 from the town. But yeah, we need to go up quite a bit more before it's gonna cool off. over here. Oh well. Let's cross back over.
are. fun. Oh yeah. tomorrow so tonight I need to make sure I grab my vaccination card out of my bag have all that stuff ready I wish I could kind of look at that, but I kind of can't. Wow. Didn't need to go up there, but why not? I'm a little surprised at the amount of just random loose stuff that there is in Washington. Like, haven't really seen it anywhere else. I wonder if Idaho is going to be the same way. Kind of hope not. It's not a whole lot of fun. Up on a bad line there. Let's go up here. Oh. It's not a whole lot better. There you go. Oh, that wind feels excellent. Temp says it's down to 73. So if it could stay like this for a little bit, I might actually cool down not be sweating so much. Yeah. Let me get some, yeah, go for it. Let him rip a little bit. He hasn't had the chance to not be in the dirt. I got no problem being sweep. Wee. Okay.
Steve had a little bit of a moment. He went through this, I guess a little too fast and ended up over there in the loose stuff, <laughs> which happens, definitely. Winthrop definitely had more services, but I mean, we can stop and look at the map if you want. My map shows a gas station up here in Twisp. So if you want to like stop, we can figure it out. Seven miles to Chellin, or to whatever the next town is. I can't remember the name of it. Ooh, that is dusty. I'm gonna hang back a ways. There's no wind either, so there's nothing to clear it off of the road. Okanogan National Forest. Well, this is absolutely beautiful. Move, please. Pick a direction. Thank you. Watch out. Watch out, Josh. Yeah. forests. It's the loop loop. Okay, that makes the waypoint make a lot more sense because it says China Wall of Loop Loop and I had no clue what it was, but it's 28 miles from here, so I don't know what Loop Loop is, but it's actually a place. Whoa, yeah, okay. Jesus. Thirty-one miles to Concully, fourteen miles to Leader Lake, whatever that is. So we're ninety miles from the finish, basically. You okay? Hold on, hold on, hold on. We're right here. Uh, I gotta get somewhere where I can actually put my side stand down. 
What hurts? Okay, just take a second. Do you feel anything pop or anything like that? No. Nah. Okay. Just just hang out there for a minute. We'll take care of the bike. Just breathe. Ribs or side? Like side. Like okay. Yeah, just give it a minute. Let me get my helmet off and stuff. Jacket, just take it out. Where does it hurt at? Can you like, I'd say like. Point at it if you can. Like right in here. Like in the back almost? Yeah. Let me just feel a little bit. Is that okay? Might, like hit it right in here. Like in your hip almost? Yeah. Okay. So at least there's no ribs there. <laughs> just take a minute. We'll, uh, we'll get the bike cleared out. And see how you're feeling. <laughs> yeah, this front wheel just. It just, it was that, that rut. Yeah, it, it happens. Uh, one, two, three. Uh, definitely landed <laughs> hard. You're okay breathing on everything now? Yeah. Okay. It was, I mean, just the front wheel started to climb. Oh, and, and it just wipes it out from it underneath just, you, so there's nothing yeah, you can do. Threw me. I mean, you can see how I landed. Yeah. It just it looked all clear, and all of a sudden that just like it's like shadows and. Oh and all yeah, of a no. It was like I'm like oh. You're in I, it before you realize it's there. Yep. That's gonna be a bruise. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you want to try and sit up at all? Yeah. <laughs> Nice and easy. Hey, it's adventure riding. It happens. There you go. Is your key in your jacket seat? Yeah. I'm gonna move the helmet over there too, just so nothing crawls into it. One pair of pants later. Well, Steve wins the award for the best off of the trip so far. I was on a trip up in Wyoming and uh, one of the girls that was riding with us on a DRZ 400 did about the same thing, except she full on face planted. Had to get a new helmet. Like her chin bar was the first thing to make contact with the ground. She thankfully didn't like break her nose or anything, but we definitely had a moment of like, what did you do? This is the spot right here where I just wiped out my biggest wipe out so far so we'll just document that and uh, this is our last day on the BDR so uh, hopefully that's my last crash at least here's the first test can I get on my motorcycle yep okay we did that and I mean it'll loosen up the more you move around yeah gonna suck for a while all right away we go uh, put it in gear and then away we go uh, You guys missed the turn What turn is back here hard left oh all right, I got a turnaround spot right here. Oh, fuck. And I dropped my bike in the turnaround spot. Fuck. One, two, three. <laughs> yeah.
Steve's definitely hurting. He landed really hard on his side, so his whole hip flexor and everything's kind of locking up. up the absolute worst part of that. <laughs> it's a tight turn with sand. So I know we're not going a blistering pace, but I have a new approach and that is stay upright to make time. We're having to lay back a ways because it's really dusty. Yeah, I imagine it's super dusty. miles to the China Wall of Loop Loop and the Arlington Mine. Good old Arlington Mine. Uh, UPS truck up. Oh, hey, Brown delivering. So, we're hardcore when the UPS <laughs> is out here. Well, I've learned a lesson, one lesson from two crashes in the last 24 hours. I crash every time I'm getting just a little too confident and I start posoing. I'm gonna not do that for a little bit. Oh shit, man. Shit, shit, shit. Don't, don't, don't. Fuck. Shit. Oh my god. I'm gonna stop. I'm stopping down here. Yeah, stop down there. Alright, let me find a spot to grab. All right, I'm ready. One, two, three. <clears throat> Keep, oh, okay. All right, all you. Okay. Okay, I got three more that way. Three more that way. One more. That was almost indicating 22. Yeah, they got seven, which is kind of close to 22. Well, the guy was giving me two, f two fingers on each hand. He said seven to me verbally. Oh, okay. What the hell, this is number eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We are seven miles from Concully. We're one mile from the Ruby Town site, which is where it had the note about a steep descent. Oh, that's good to know.
this would be some work to come up. Main Street following this county road was 60 feet wide. It was abandoned overnight when the price of silver dropped in 1893. And only a few stone foundations remain of what was, what was once the most famous mining camp of the Northwest. It's always crazy to me the number of towns that literally just went empty overnight because of the change to the gold standard. You'd have town, you know, cities of 10,000 people plus. And the moment we switched to the gold standard, just the entire town went bankrupt. It really is. Probably two or three hundred people, maybe. 14 miles to Lone Frank Pass, so we're definitely going to go up an altitude real quick. Salmon Meadows. That's really pretty. View for you. Oh, big ruts. Oh, bottom of the forks out on that first one. Yeah, I, I've been really kind of surprised at how little there's been on this route. There's more water crossings on the uh, Colorado BDR. I see it. Nope. <laughs> Ooh, that's a big rut. All right. <sighs> I about that up. You okay? Oh, you drove into the mud? <laughs> Whoopsie! <laughs> stay, stay left, stay left on that other, other one. Ten miles to Skull and Crossbones, something or another. I can't read it on here. Oh, big rocks. Okay. Don't go through the middle. Skull and Crossbones Corral, nine miles.
careful. Yeah, don't do that. I'm gonna stop up here. Hey, you made it through. That's all that matters. Wine the road. Deer. Oh, and deer. Uh, Steve. Yeah, am I off? I have it as a hard right U-turn going up the hill. Really? Mine looks like it's following this. Yeah, all right. I mean, here, I'm gonna just go up a few more feet because then I'll know. All right, I'm gonna at least get on the start of this and then. about f that up. Uh, I'm gonna go up here a ways. It gets interesting. I don't want to stop on this. I'm gonna go chase this deer for a minute. <laughs> there we go. Cabin's supposed to be in here somewhere. Alright, here's Skull and Crossbones Corral. There it is. Yeah. I'm gonna go right here. Does anybody know anything about this other than that it's a cabin in the middle of nowhere? Nope. 20 minutes later. Watch that tree. Somewhere out there's got to be Canada. Oh wow. I believe we are going to pop out onto the pavement in about 12 miles. Two miles to Chopra Lake, 23 miles to the border.
think that's the end of the off-road portion of this BDR. It's also now 91 degrees. A few inches later. leaving the United States. Whew. Oh God, it's hot. <laughs> Where are you off to? I am cutting through and going to the top of Idaho. How long are you going to take to do that? I'll wait. I'll probably get there tomorrow. No, oh, just your your ID. It'll link up to your oh, okay. vaccine. Did you do the arrive cam? Yes. So it'll pop up. So no. How long do you say it's going to take you? Probably I'll probably get there tomorrow. Okay. So I have a hotel like an hour and 45 minutes or so from here. And then I'll go the rest of the way tomorrow. Are you all traveling together? Not really. We've been traveling for the last couple of days, but then they're going west to like Vancouver in that area and I'm going east. Okay. Welcome. Awesome. Enjoy your trip. Thank you very much. Five minutes later. See you guys. <clears throat> Welcome to Canada.